Hallelujah. Well, it's a pleasure to be in front of you once again. Amen. It always is. It's an honor. Praise the Lord. And I believe uh, we're going to hear some tonight that every one of us needs to hear. Amen. How many of you came to hear the word of God? Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. In the Bible, Jesus did many miraculous things. We read in the Gospels. He's healed. He's saved. He, the lame man was able to walk when he spoke out the name of Jesus and had faith in him. And hey, let me tell you, great and mighty things happen when Christ is in the midst of us. And still today, great and mighty things could happen if we allow him to sit in the midst of us this night. How many of you believe Jesus is in this place? Amen. He went to the cross 2,000 years ago for you and I. For we were wretched. We were tore up. I know I was. Maybe some of you are still tore up in this place. But He died for the sinner. He died that we may not have to face death. Amen. Come on. He died that we may not have to burn in hell for eternity. He came to redeem mankind. Amen. Sin entered into the world by one man's disobedience. And through one man's obedience, hey, we have eternal life if we choose to. Come on. Come on. It's up to us. Praise the Lord. Open your Bibles to, to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Amen. And in this last hour, as Pastor Ray was saying here, it is an hour of prayer. We need to pray, church. This is a desperate time we're living in. Mom killing children, father killing sons, uh, sons killing moms and dads and daughters, vice versa. They, they, they now put on the, on, the, on the video this young lady getting abortion, saying it ain't that bad. Come on. Amen. We're living in the last times, the end times, and the devil is putting out every bit of his arsenal. He's on an attack. And the church must arise. Amen. The church needs to arise in this last hour in a powerful way. There's streets outside here that need Christ. Amen. There's loved ones that need Christ. And it is our duty as born again believers to pray and fast for the lost out there. It's our duty, church. Not just to come to church, but our duty is to pray and fast. To seek the Lord for these lost loved ones. For those souls we don't even know that we pass by every day on the highway, along the streets. But there's always something that hinders us from growing in Christ. And it's our own heart. Our heart hinders us. How many of you have known that your heart has hindered you? Amen. My heart has hindered me from growing in Christ for, for, for a long time. Amen. We, we, we desire certain things, amen, and we want to hold on to certain things. And the Lord tells us, you got to let go of that. Let me have the entire you. I cannot just have 99.5%. I want the whole 100% or I don't want none of you. Amen. He wants the entire being. He wants the whole of you, not just the little bit of you. Come on. So here in... in, in the Gospel of Mark, verse chapter 10, verse 17, in the Amplified Version. Please. Amen. And as he was set it out on his journey, a young man, a, a man, r ran up and knelt before him. This is Jesus. Jesus is, 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 is standing and this young man kneels before him and asks him, Teacher, are you essentially and perfectly moral? Morally good, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do, teacher, to inherit, to inherit eternal life? That is, to partake of eternal salvation in the Messiah's kingdom. How many of you want to receive 
Amen. And inherit eternal life with Messiah. Amen. That's why we're here, right? Amen. Everybody's hand went up. If your hand didn't go up, then you might be tired from work or school. But I believe everybody comes to church, brother, pastor Eddie, to receive something they need in their life. Amen. And check this out. Amen. I'm looking on to heaven. This ain't my home. If this was my home, then I would pride in this place. I would, I would, I would sell myself out to this world. But Christ came and saved me. He gave me eternal life when I did not deserve it. Amen. I was a sinner, lost, torn up, full of thrown up. Amen. And he picked me up. He said, come follow me, son, and I will make you a saint of mine. I will make you glory in me. I will give you blessings that you would never imagine. That's what he gave me so far. He hasn't left me. He hasn't forsaken me. Nor abandon me. It's a pleasure. It's, eight years ago I was crying to Pastor Eddie. I don't know if I could do this. And he would tell me, hold on. Hold on. It gets a little rough. It gets a little bumpy. It gets a little... Uh. If you all know what I mean, amen, when God starts dealing with that inner person, it gets a little, uh, amen, and as things begin to fall apart in front of your eyes, but let me tell you, there's good news, God is doing something, God is on the move, God is having to pull stuff out of you to make you real, that's what he's doing, we come in here and we want a fixed job, amen, Midas touch or whatever, oh, oh call Mako. Amen. A four-hour a four paint job and we're done. I'm, I'm baptized, born again, and I'm going to go save the world. No. Amen. God got to prepare us. And here, here he is. And this young man says, what do I got to do to inherit eternal salvation in the Messiah and the kingdom? Next verse. And Jesus said unto him. Jesus said to him. Why do you call me essential and perfect and morally good? There is... No one essentially and perfectly morally good except God alone. Except God alone. Jesus is giving God praise right there. Amen. Verse 19. You know the commandments. Do not kill. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And the young man, he rapidly replied he replied to the teacher and and to him and said teacher i have carefully guarded and observed all these and taken care not to violate them from my boyhood i followed your law i followed the law of moses i did everything to show myself perfect how many of you know that have you ever tried to follow all the law have you ever tried to? You go nuts. Come on. You will go nuts trying to obey the Ten Commandments. Brother, I don't know no man but Jesus Christ who did such. Come on. Come on. All right. So he goes, yeah, I, I, I did that when I was a young man. Yeah, I kept up with it. Amen. And Jesus, look. Look at number 21. And Jesus, looking at the... Looking upon him, loved him. I love that. Jesus, looking upon him, loved him. He knew. He knew that nobody could keep the commandments. But yet he still loved him. He still loved him. Come on. Amen. And he said this to him. And he said to him, you lack one thing. Uh-oh. Go and sell all you have and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come come look at this great invitation by christ come and accompany me and walk the same road that i walk the, the, there's an invitation come come how many of you have been called by god to follow and come amen i believe every one of us in this place 
Amen. He said, come. Come aside with me. Come with me. Amen. But there's one thing you lack. There's one thing you lack. And that is, amen, your heart is upon your riches. Your heart is, is somewhere else. Amen. How many of you know that that young man had his heart somewhere else? Because the next verse says it this way. Amen. Check this out. And then he said, come, follow me. Walk, walk with me. And at the same, at that same, the man's countenance fell and was gloomy. <laughs> and went away grieved and sorrow, sor sorrowing, for he was holding great possession. Amen. I want to stop there for a minute. Amen. He was holding great possessions. Some of us are still holding on to great possessions. And he was sorrow, grieved. Couldn't get to the cross. Let me tell you, if you want to follow Christ, you got to bear your cross. Oh, no, no, no. Uh -uh. Amen. We want the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but we don't want to bear the cross, brother. Come on. We want to teach people about the Bible. But we still have possessions that we haven't denied to. We haven't given up to Christ Jesus. Come on, church. God gave his very best right at the cross. Now he asks you to just give a little bit. Whatever has the greater part of your heart. He says, you cannot follow me. Unless you deny yourself and bear that cross. That's a hard thing to do, right? Well, let me tell you what bearing the cross is, church. It's not burying a sickness. It's something that you, amen, have to look at, in other words, and say, wow, I got to deny myself to pick that up? You mean I got I to gotta say no to this worldliness? And pick that up. How many ache at that? Amen. Maybe the cancer stick or the smoking has us bound. And God's saying, you can't get to that cross. Nor can you bear that cross until that habit flies. Because it has more of your time than I have with you. Maybe it ain't even a smoking of a cigarette. Alright. But in order to bear that cross. You got to deny your whole self. You got to deny your strength because, hey amen, you cannot bear that cross on your own strength. Least you crumble. Least you fall. Least it becomes a hindrance to you. Least you give up easily. You cannot bear that cross. That's why he tells the young man, he says, uh uh, brother, you got to give up all your position, possession. He says it that way. He says, give it all up. Give it all up and come and accompany me. Come and walk with me. Come, come and follow me. The King James Version says it this way. He says it this way. He says, come, take up the cross and follow me. Take up the cross and follow me. How many of you still got something hidden underneath your pillow? Amen of your heart. How many of you still got a little hidden sin inside of you? Because until that hidden sin is brought to the cross, you cannot take up your cross. Come on. The problem with the church today is we want the worldly things and yet still demonstrate like we have a cross. Come on. We want, we want everything the world, the neighbors, the best friends. Amen. Everything they have. And still claim we have a cross. Y'all alive. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to give you my jacket, brother. Amen. Don't drop it. <laughs> Praise God. Here we are. We're at the cross. Go with me to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Give me a minute here. I, I'm getting my... The, the Holy Spirit's getting me started now. You got to give me a minute now. Amen. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Verse 23. All right. He says it this way. And he said to all, if any person wills, 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 amen, to come after me, 
Let him deny himself, disown himself, forget, lose sight of himself and his own interests. His own interests, lose sight of himself, forget himself, forget everything. Amen. His own interests, refuse and give up on himself. Come on, give up on himself, refuse himself, his own interests. Amen. Lose sight of himself. Everything about yourself has to go. Come on. You cannot bring yourself and, and all, your, all your goods with you when you go and bear that cross. It just got to be you and Jesus, nothing other. He went to that cross alone. He went there stripped, broken, amen, not broken, but beat. He went there whipped, beat, bloody mess for you and I that we may have atonement, amen. And he's given us atonement. By his blood, we are atoned, amen. We have salvation. We've been forgiven. We have been remission of our sins. We've been wiped. Our sins been wiped away at that cross. Don't you think that he liked you all by yourself? He wants you all by yourself, brother. Amen. Well, I don't know. This dude's too much. Amen. Check it out. That's what he said. Ah, uh, all your own interests, all your self-interest, all your wants, all your desires. Here's some man over here wanting a wife. Amen. There's some girls over there wanting a husband. Amen. Leave it in the hands of God. Get to the cross first. It goes on and saying, you got to lose sight of yourself. Get out of the mirror. Hey. I'm too beautiful for that cross. Well, let me tell you, that cross is going to be messy. Because it's despised by the world. It's foolishness to those who are perishing. But power unto us who believe. Come on, church. Amen. At the cross. Jesus disarmed every principality, every darkness, every wickedness. Amen. He triumphed over them openly for all humanity can see. Won't you want to wear, bear one? Wouldn't you want to bear one? Come on. If, if, if he did that for me, my goodness, that if I want victory in my life, I'm going to bear my cross. But no interest could come with me. Amen. Nothing that I used to hold on to as my old life can go with me. Um, because when you're a new creation, you're a new creation. All that old past has been washed away. You shouldn't want to have to go backwards. You're going forwards. He says, oh my goodness. And he goes, take up, your, take up the cross. Take up the cross. And take up the cross. Take up his cross daily and follow me, follow me, follow me. Cleave steadfastly to me. Grab a hold of me. Conform wholly to my example. Oh, come on. Are we that example? And live in living and if need be in dying also. In dying also. There is this story I read to the youth about a martyr. This young, two young ladies... In China. Amen. And, and, and they, they, they got to deny Christ. They, they, they're at gunpoint saying you got to deny Christ. But before they pull out the gun. Amen. The story goes. That, that, that these young women said no we're not going to deny Christ. We're not. We're keeping the faith. How many of you know you need faith to bear that cross? That's what you need. Amen. And, and, and so they said, no, we're not denying Christ. So, so come to know. They looked up and they seen their pastor holding the pistol that was going to be pointed at them. And before they, 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 they took the, the bullet to the head, one of the young ladies spoke up and said, Pastor, can I say something? And I'm paraphrasing the story, excuse me. But uh, she goes, she goes we, we held on to everything you taught us. And you told us that there would come troubled times. But Christ could get us through them. And if them who give, bring persecution to us and stare, stare at us in the face, you taught us to forgive them. And that's all they had to say. And the pastor shot him. Martyred for Christ. Do you have that much faith? Because when you start bearing this cross. Amen. God will build that faith. Come on. 
God will start building that. It ain't an easy thing because, let me tell you, this ain't popular. This ain't popular, church. Uh Uh-huh. Hey, let's go to the park, Pastor Eddie. Pastor Mike, andale. Amen. My cross doesn't fit in the car. Let's put it on your hood. This ain't popular. Take this to work one of these days. See what the boss says. Come on. This ain't a popular thing. Come on, you want to really see them, see them that you are a real Christian, then start showing it off. Start testifying about it. Amen. Telling them about what Jesus has done for you at the cross. Amen. I tell the youth, take this to your school. I'll let you borrow it. Just bring it back in one piece. Amen. But nobody has challenged me to that. Let me tell you, you will uproar the devil. We take it down the streets of Denver, Colorado. And let me tell you, there's a lot of cheers, a lot of waves, a lot of yay. But then there's a lot of others that are disappointed to see that out there. What gain is it to us? Go to the next verse. He says, for whoever would preserve his life and save it will lose and destroy it. Oh my goodness. But whoever loses his life for my sake. Right here. Come on church. Look at the cross. For my sake. For my sake. Amen. He will preserve and save it from the penalty of eternal death. Bear your cross. You will save your life from eternal death. Oh, you're not hearing me, church. Bear that cross. Bear that cross. Let me tell you, it ain't easy bearing it. Especially when you're teaching youth and showing them what it is. Because some of them buck against the, the word of God. But God says, uh, this word ain't in void. This word does not come back void. It does not come back empty. It is a seed being planted in a heart. Amen. When people see this cross, but living through you, amen, they're going to recognize something great, something new. They're going to see Jesus Christ through you. But you got to bear that cross. That a young man went away grieved. He went away sad. He went away sorrow filled because he could not let go. Of what his heart so dearly had pleasure in. And then, and then the Lord spoke this to me. He did not have faith in whom he was, whom was calling him to follow. Jesus was saying, come, abide with me. Accompany me. Jesus gave him an invitation. Be my disciple. Be my disciple. And he's like, uh uh-uh, uh, I have, I have more faith in my riches. I have more faith in the world economy. I have more faith in my job. Come on. I have more faith in the things of this world than to follow some crazy man bearing a cross. Yee. Come on. Check this out. Watch. Amen. I'm going to try to do this as cool as possible. Come here, brother. I'm going to borrow the usher. Is that okay? Is that all right? Amen. Okay, bro. You're full of world. Okay, put this. Come on. Let me, let me find another one. Hold on. Wait up, church. Bear with me. Amen. Some of us are visual in this place. And we need we need visual things. Here, carry that. Okay. I love it. Ladies, don't get jealous now. Okay. Oops. I'm trying to open this and then I'm closing it at the same time. Praise the Lord. Here you go. Here's the matching one. Come on, you need the matching one, brother. Okay. Here's that one too. You got to carry that too, bro. All right. Okay, don't get mad now. I'm just loading you up. Where's the zipper? Right here. All right. Okay. I don't know how you're going to figure this. Figure this out. You got to carry this too, brother. Come here. Come here. Follow me. Come on here. There's the modern day Christian. Now come here. Bear your cross, bro. 
Come on. Here, bro, you got to grab it. Follow me. Jesus is calling you to follow. Now, come on. Let's go for a walk. Come here. Can you do it? Hey, praise God. Amen. I'm following Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Is it comfortable? Come on. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's the way we are. Many of us in the church have no power to defeat the enemy. No power to pray for our families. No power, no zeal, amen, no conviction anymore because we're carrying everything from the world. We carry everything. And the cross is meaningless. It's going to get heavy. It's going to be sometimes Jesus says, hey, one of these, amen, if you're ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of you also. Amen. Amen. And things inside of these little baggages. See, that's our heart right here, church. That young man had his heart and his heart was filled with possessions. Come on here. Let's see what's in your bag. Come here. I'll let you give a rest. Put them down. Uh, you're not done yet. Okay. You can put them right there. Thank you, Usher. Amen. Try that. Uh, walk the rest of your life like that. Come on, Christian. Why would you want to walk the rest of your life like that when Jesus gave us victory at Calvary? Come on. Why would we want to walk burdened, heavy laden, broken? When Jesus gave us victory at Calvary. Some of us are battling some bad, terrible sins tonight. Amen. And he buried it and took it to it, the cross at Calvary. Amen. I just got to turn that around because it was backwards. I was tired of seeing the nuts. Amen. But he did it at Calvary. That you and I may have everlasting life. Go with me to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Everybody alive. Take up your cross. Meaning, hey, amen. I'm going to take it up. The cross is obedience to God. That's what the cross is. It's being obedient. That's why it could get a little heavy sometimes. Because our flesh likes to act out. Our flesh likes to do its own thing. Mr. Flesh likes to play around. Mr. Flesh gets a little lazy. Mr. Flesh likes to carry things. Mr. Flesh likes to be a part of the world. That's why it gets so heavy, church. That's why the cross gets so uncomfortable. Let me tell you, it is going to get uncomfortable. But let me tell you, when the world is coming against us, but yet you desire to carry more of the world, it's going to fall apart. You will fall apart. You will become spiritually dead. Amen. You will become stagnant. Then soon, you will lose your zeal, your fire, your conviction of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You will lose it all because you choose to pick up the baggage of the old life. Amen. That would be crazy. Okay. Let's go to church. Some of us come to the altar. Lord, take it off. Never. But I need it back. Come on. Come on. Take it all, Lord. Have my babies, Lord. Have my sons and daughters, Lord. Take it all, Lord. But we're the greatest hindrance to them. We're telling them, follow Christ, but you're not. Uh-oh, moms and dads. I see it in the youth. Amen. Yeah, it reflects. Well, they all have their own life. Yes, they do. They do. We all have our choice. That young man had a choice to bear his cross, but he, he desired not to. His heart wasn't there. We all want to be saved. We all want to be with the redeeming Father in heaven one of these days. Right now, we're looking on to and looking forward to the rapture of the church. Come on. But how can you be raptured carrying all this junk? Come on, it's narrow, hello. It's a narrow path 
We are on. Come on, some of you don't like this. But praise God. It's a narrow path. Can't take your RV. It's a narrow path. Your house has to stay behind. It's all in vain. We sow and till so much in this ground here on this earth. We put more time in our 401ks. We put more time in watching our bank accounts increase and decrease. We put more time in our labor for man than we do for the labor for the cross of Christ. We put more time, more effort to see ourselves shining and looking good for mankind, but not for Jesus Christ. We do. Pick it up. No, it's too heavy. I need to pray about it. Yeah. Oh, that's what they say. Let me pray about it, Pastor, first. You know, I'm really, you know. It, it, I like the way Chris Clark says, this ain't for sissies. Christianity ain't for wimps. Amen. We need warriors in this last hour. We need warriors in the church. We need warriors to raise kids. We need warriors. Some of your parents argue the fact maybe if they brought the Bible back into school. No, maybe if you read it at home. Come on. I ought to read it at home first. Oh, I'm praying that they bring it back into school. Man, when was the last time you read it? Come on. We're glamorizing ourselves when it's all about Jesus. It's all about what he did. Man, how many of you were broken and he redeemed? How many of you were broken and he brought back to life in a new life? In a new life, in a new life. How many of you were dead to sin, but he rose you up with the touch of his hand? Amen. I was dead. I was carrying everything. And he said, come. And I said, I can. And I, why not? And I said, but that. And he says, leave it. Baby steps then. You watch a little baby. A little baby don't run to you right away. They got to learn how to crawl. Come on, us Christians, we want to be abracadabra, made magic, boom, Jesus all over. No, we're going to fall. We're going to hit our knees. We're going to get a little upset. We're going to get a little bombarded. We're going to take a little punch here and there. But that doesn't mean we give up. That means we keep on looking to the cross. That means we keep on bearing the cross. That means we keep on giving ourselves onto this cross. And I fell last night, Pastor. Well, get up. Get up. What are you doing now? Don't you know the blood of Jesus? It washes. It cleanses. It purifies. When I just don't know, I think I need counseling. Well, go to the great counselor. Amen. I mean, my goodness. We always have problems. Uh, you, you talk to the pastors here, the church has big problems. Amen. They're counseling everybody. Amen. So no. The answer is right here for a victorious Christian life. Come on. It's right here. He's washed us with his mighty blood. The blood that flowed from Emmanuel's veins has touched us, has cleansed us, has given us life. Now he must bear that cross and show a world that is living in darkness, in perversion, in lies, and hypocrisy. Show them the true love of Jesus also. For they are veiled. Veiled they are. And they must see the light of Christ in this last hour. They need to see it, youth. Of church. They need to see it. We're at home sitting back. My kids are out there smoking dope. Uh, he thought I'm going to church. Maybe God will take my problem. Oh, great. Uh, I don't know if I could do this any longer. I don't think God's answering my prayers. Amen. Let it go. Let it go. Let yourself go already. Like that young boy scout. 
He asked that other couple of the younger Boy Scouts, amen, cross your arms and you get up here on this step and just close your eyes, turn your back towards us and just fall back and let us catch you. The same way Jesus does. You just got to believe and have faith. He will catch you. He will catch you. He will catch you. Come on, church. He is looking after your best interest, but you must look after his too. Come on, Colossians chapter 1, I mean, uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Okay? It goes, if then, uh oh, watch this. This is cool. If then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, thou sharing his resurrection from the dead, aim at and seek the rich eternal treasures that are above where Christ is and seated, seated at the right hand of God. Aim at, begin to seek. Amen. If Christ raised me from that dead, brother. Amen. If he took my sins and washed them away. I ain't going to be looking for another answer in the world. Because he's did it all already. He has the ultimate answer. And that answer is in eternity with him. It's up there in that glorified cloud, brother. It's up there in daddy's house. It's up there in heaven. Why would I want to stay down here? If he could save a drunkard, an alcoholic, a drug addict. Amen. A pervert. Amen. All of the above. How much more can he save those out there in the world that is blinded, deaf, mute. Amen. That need Jesus. How much more can he see? Man, I came in here. You could ask Pastor Eddie and Pastor Mike, Pastor Ray. Before and after picture, please. No, just kidding. Amen. Yeah. That was scary, bro. I look like the Crip Creeper. <laughs> yeah. Hey, before and afters. Come on, men and women. Amen. Look at what God is doing in the house. Man, we see miracles here every time. We see miracles at this altar, back in the youth. We see them up in children church. Miracles are happening 24 hours in this house. Amen. Women being delivered, men being delivered, children being touched, youth being filled. Miracles are happening. Open up your eyes, open up your heart, and begin to follow Christ Jesus. I don't know. Oh, it's going back, huh? Some of us have some bad juju going on in these bags. Come on. Yeah. We hide everything, don't we? Try to hide it from our moms, from our dads, from our wives. Come on, husband. From our husbands. We try to hide it. But let me tell you, you're not that wise. Because God is looking down. God is looking down. He's seeing you. He's seeing what you do in the dark. He's seeing you, seeing what you do when nobody else is around. He's watching us. And he's saying, my goodness, why are you grieving the spirit again? Why do you grieve me again? Don't you know what the cross is all about? I took your sin there. I buried it. Amen. I broke it. And I there it's been hung, dead, buried. Amen. Now you're resurrected in a new life, church. You arise in that new life, habitually living it for Christ Jesus. Hold on, Pastor. I got plans. Huh. Have they ever told you that, Pastor? Any they have plans? Probably all the time, no. God knows. I was in the home, ladies and men. Amen. I was in the home, and I heard it many a times because I spoke it many a times to Pastor Eddie. Pastor, I know what I got to do. Go back to New Mexico and find a church and stay plugged in. <laughs> Come on. I knew that. Yeah. But in my heart, I knew I wasn't right. In my heart, I knew I hadn't allowed God to touch this one few things that were still lingering. That were still beating me up. That were still keeping me from picking up that cross. There was them few things that kept me from really picking that up. I would go walk around it. I would go touch it. I would go dream about it. I would go on and hair, carry it. Yeah, me and you together, baby. But I would not bear it. Because it was a reflection of what I was. A sinner, lost, amen, broke. And I couldn't bear that. 
I was like, my goodness. God, why do you got to deal with us this way, God? Why? And he says, well, I'm the hands that form the clay. I got to form you. I got to mold you. I got to squeeze that stuff right out of you. Every contamination got to bubble up. Every impurity got to arise. I don't want nothing impure. I don't want nothing that, that's going to take you backwards. Because I'm looking for a soldier that keep on going forward. Not backwards. Not backsliding every month. Amen. He's tired of seeing that because they're not bearing the cross. We have backsliders in the church by the thousands, brother. Secret backsliders. Secret ones. They don't know it. They know the songs holy roller. Oh, God, I wish I'd get a right one these days. Serious. They're holding on to things out there in the world. God sees, church. He understands. He's a God that is familiar with our infirmities. He's a God that knows our troubles. Amen. And he gives us a way of escape when that temptation does come towards us. He gives us a way out. And it's to the cross. It's to the cross, church. Amen. What a beautiful thing. He would, lose, he would leave his heavenly place, brothers. Amen. For you and I. You never thought you were being loved on women. Start looking to Jesus, and you will never know any other kind of love. Amen. How can anybody love me? Amen. I was barely been holding on to a thread, but with her, Chongo, she dragged me up to the men's home. I was all shaking, dry heaving. <laughs> Nothing felt good. Brother couldn't even keep water in my system. I was so sick. Amen. But she stood by me. And Jesus never gave up on me. Amen. He never did. But it was a journey to understand what this is all about. It always is. It doesn't, boom, born again. I oh, said a prayer for five minutes. Now I'm ready for the world. Amen. No. You got to understand this. Amen. You got to understand Christ Jesus. And what he did here. At the cross. It's just no knowledge. It's an intimacy. It's, it's a desire to know. See Christians today think just coming to church. That's enough. Go home. Turn on the tube. Whatever happened to the message that will take you home and put you on your face. Come on. You never leave the, you, you, you can't go home and turn on that TV no more. Because something's convicting you inside. Something from the message. Something from the Lord. Something from the Holy Spirit. And you can't sit still. You can't listen to no TV. You can't go get in the world. You got to find yourself at the feet of the cross. So he says, look. Seek those riches. Treasures up above. Verse 2. Seek them. And set your minds. And keep them set. Keep them set on what is above. Come on. The higher things. Not on the things that are on the earth. Come on. How many of you got closets full of junk? <laughs> yeah, I'm the only one, I guess. Amen. <laughs> You'd ask my wife. Amen. We, 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 we still have stuff from New Mexico. That was already eight years almost. Check this out. And it's all piled up. Some of us leave the church house tonight. There will be some of us. And we'll go back. And pick this up. Pick it up. After he put it at the cross. Come on. You got to leave it at the cross church. You want a victorious life? Stop trying to do it your own way. There is only one way, and the prescription way, the prescribed way, excuse me, is through Jesus Christ and the cross of Calvary. That is the prescribed way. No other. There's no other way, church. So he says, stop. Not 
Do not start thinking. Do not set your mind on the things of this earth anymore. Come on. You're a new creation. You've been raised with Christ Jesus. You've been a child. You're a woman, a man of God. You've been raised. Start walking in that integrity. Start walking in that character. Start following that example. Start following it. Start looking at yourself as, 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 as a child of God. Humble. Meek. Lovely. Come on now. I'm bearing my cross, Pastor Eddie. You know, these men of God could, 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 could see a forge, a, a, a counterfeit a mile away. And so can your kids. Come on. Yeah, let's get a little more. Uh-oh. I better stop, Lord. He says, no, keep on. He says, keep on. Go to the next verse. Come on. I'm not done. I'm just barely even breaking a sweat now. Amen. For as far as the, this world is concerned, you have died. You are dead to this world, church. Remember Paul the apostle says, I am crucified to this world and the world to me. I no longer exist as part of this world. I've been crucified. I've been crucified. I've been crucified. And this world has been crucified to me. Me and him, we don't have nothing in common no more. What I thought was good, what I thought was powerful, all my knowledge, Paul says, all my teaching, all the theory, learning a Pharisee of a Pharisee, a Hebrew of a Hebrew, he counts it all but dung now to win and learn Christ. He threw it all aside. He says, I'm going to carry that of the Pharisees. I'm, 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 the Lord did something to that man. And God got to do that to the church. He got to waken them. Awaken them. He says it that way. Go, go to the. Oh, hold on. Let me finish reading it. Amen. For as, as far as this world is concerned, you have died. You have died. And you, your real, your new and real life is hidden with Christ in God. It's hidden with Christ and God. Come on. No more of this. No more of that. Nuh-uh. Uh-uh. Better not break it. But no more of that. Come on. Come on. Some of us. Some of us. Come on. Let me, let me see. Let me see what we got in here. I like this. Amen. Uh-oh. What are we carrying here? Oh, great. <gasps> Idolatry. Idolatry. I've been carrying that all along. Yeah, some of us still have idols. Come on, young youth. I want to be like them on MTV. Some of us women, or you, not, not of us women, some of you women idolize your bodies. You're always in the mirror. Some of you men do the same thing. We have idols out there. And we carry this along. You, you, this is a disgrace to have idols and try to bear that cross now. It's a disgrace. It is. Trying to be that way. What else? Oh, no. That one's no good no more. Amen. Let's see. Pastor Eddie, we'll look in the big one like a Christmas present. <laughs> Give me the big one. I want the big one. Oh, great. Pride. Come on. Well, you know, honey, I won't go to church tonight, but I'll go with you on Sunday. Hey! And your house is falling apart. Shingles and everything are missing. Waters are leaking because you're lazy and slothful. Come on. You'd rather go down to Ben and Jerry's and hang out with the boys than come and hang out with Jesus. Come on, our pride. This kills men and women. You can't carry that cross with pride. Uh, you got to deny your whole self, church. Your whole self. Amen. Can't have pride. No way. What else is in the big suitcase, brother? Amen. Let's see what other goodies. It's like a, uh oh, this one's a hot one. Oh, goodness. Lust, ladies. Come on. Well, let me go over here to these men. 
Come on, man. Youth, look at this. Amen. This hinders you from bearing your cross, man. The way the men are. Amen. Look at this church. And we want to bear that cross when we're hiding lust. Come on, we got idolatry, we got pride, now we got lust. Which one of these do you have in your heart yet? Huh? And he's telling him, come and follow me. Give up all your riches, young man. Give it all up. Give it to the poor. Sell it. And follow me. Here's a great invitation by Jesus Christ, but I have lust in my heart. I can't go. I have pride. I have adultery. I have some idols. I can't go. Let me tell you. You won't go. If you don't leave it at the cross. Come on. Oh, the pretty ones. Oh, this is for you ladies. Amen. Let's see what we got in here. Amen. Oh, great. Now I broke it. Now I got to buy new Samsonites. Okay. Oh, this one's good. Unforgiveness. Man, this was one that I battled with when I was in the home. Unforgiveness because you were forsaken. Amen. Or I'm forgiven. Amen. Amen. I couldn't forgive myself because of the accident I had with my mom. I rear-ended her from behind. She died. Amen. I couldn't forgive myself. You could ask these men right here. I had that guilt upon my heart. For years, it would drive me to drink. It would drive me to drug. It would drive me to just think crazy thoughts of suicide and all that such. Amen. Because of this little thing called unforgiveness. And some of us in the body of Christ have to learn how to forgive if we want God to forgive us. Come on. We got to learn how to forgive. That grudge you hold against one another. If you do, forgive them. Bear that cross. How can you bear that cross when you still have unforgiveness? Forgive your parents. Come on. My goodness, we still hold on to it. Well, we'll give that a break. I'm getting tired looking in there. It's wearing me out. Let's go on. Come on. You guys alive? Are you bored yet? No? Okay, next verse. Thank you. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you... Also will appear with him in the splendor of his glory. Not carrying all that. Come on. How are you going to appear with him in his splendor and his glory when you're when you have some hidden idols, some pride, some lust, some unforgiveness in your heart? Well, I'm just waiting on Jesus. How? You all know who I'm talking about. You know your heart pretty good. Come on, I know mine pretty good. I know my weaknesses. I know what the devil charges me with. Amen, what he tries to to hinder me with all the time. I know that. You guys know that. We don't have to talk about it. We take it to the cross. We take it into prayer. We cry out and ask God to strengthen us. Give us grace in that area of our life. Give us what we need to overcome this enemy. Give us what we need to overcome this world. And a world full of temptation and fleshly desires and appetites. Give us what we need, Lord. Amen. And he says, bear that cross. And that's all you need. And walk with it. Uphold it. And show people that you are my servant, my child, my man, my woman. Show them that you are alive in me and I live in you. Okay. Come on. Next verse, please. Okay. So kill. Mortify. That's the hardest thing to do. For us. Especially when these were lifelong desires. Especially when you played with them. For years. So I tell the youth. Stay as pure as you can. Don't get involved in uncleanliness. Don't get involved in immorality. Don't get involved with all that crazy nonsense of the world. It might look attractive. It might look a little tasteful. It might look a little desiresome. But don't go that way. 
It's a trick. It's a snare. It's a trap. It's darkness. That thing will bind you and it will keep you and it will all suck the life right out of you. Amen. You won't be able to stand in church no more, baby. You won't be able to lift your hands no more. You just look dumbfounded at that cross, wishing you would have never have given up. Seen too many kids that way. They play with the world and they get hooked. And then you preach to them and you preach to them and you preach to them and nothing moves them. They're stuck. But there's power. There's power. Just got to step forward and leave it all behind. Come on, you can't take this with you. You can't bear that cross with all this stuff. You can't pick it up. That young man you just seen a minute ago, he, he was having a fun time trying to bear that cross with all of his baggage around him. Imagine that's the way many of us are. We come to the house of God the same way and we leave the same way. Amen. We go through the rest of the week the same way. We're always in a continual battle because we don't deny what we want to hold on to and allow Jesus to be Lord and Savior of our lives. We don't deny the unforgiveness. We don't deny the idols. We don't deny the lust. We don't want to deny it. We don't want to abandon it because it means something to that heart. It got you. It hooked you. Amen. Now it's hard to let it go. But Jesus says, run to me. I've called you to come. Follow me. You still got to chance church there's still a chance for your children there's still a chance for mankind to bear this cross there's still a chance he says so kill dead and deprive of power deprive of power go home and you turn on the tv you just ignited its power wow go turn on the music box you just ignited the power. Come on, that's what he's talking about. You go back to the world and you're looking for something your flesh desires. You do not deprive the power, but ignite the evilness. It's attracted to the flesh. Hear this out, church. The devil don't have any power unless you give him the power. Sin gives the devil an open door to that individual. Hidden sins, hidden sins are still souls that are bound. And yet, they're so ignorant, they think they're free. You're not walking in the fullness of Christ until you bear the cross. And walk with Him daily. And deny yourself daily. Then you'll understand victory. It took me years to understand that. It took me years to get boom. Hey, I finally figured it out. Throw this junk away. And start bearing that. And follow my Savior. Wholeheartedly. Not half-heartedly. All the way. So you got to deprive the world of its powers over your life. Pray. Pastor Ray says we are here on Mondays. We're here on Mondays and Fridays. And this auditorium is little, probably this much. Even less than that. We're not getting fed. We get fed, but then we leave out of this place. But not giving it out. It gets spoiled. The devil comes along and takes it. It says, deprive it of its power. The evil desires lurk, lurking in your members, in your members, in your members. Those animal impulses and all its earthly, all, is, all that is earthly in you, all that is earthly in you, that is employed in sin. The sexual vices, the impurity, the sensual appetites, the unholy desires, and all greed and all covetousness. For that is adultery. Amen. The defying of self and others. Mortify them deeds of the body. Amen. He says if you die, if you've been baptized, with Christ. You've been dead with Christ. Amen. But just as Christ has rose from the grave, you too will raise up in the same likeness, in the same, amen, in a glory, in a new body, in a new creation, you will arise. 
Since we are no longer slaves to sin when we're bearing that cross. Because we know what that cross did. We honor that cross. We look to this cross. Amen. And we honor it because Jesus took our very sin there. He paid our very debt there. Amen. And that is something to look upon. Next verse. One more verse. Amen. It is on this account. It is on account of these very sins that the holy anger of God is ever so coming upon the sons of disobedience. Those who are, uh, how do you say that? Obst yeah, thank you. Opposed to the divine will. You who are, those who are opposing it. They, 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 they don't think this is, they don't think God is for real possibly. They, their faith ain't in the cross. It ain't in the blood. It ain't in Jesus. Their faith is, is, is in other things. They put their time and efforts in other things. They're trying to bear the cross bearing other things. They're trying to carry the load when Jesus says, I've already carried it. Amen. That's what the cross is for. Amen. It wasn't for just for one kind of race of human beings. It was for all human beings. That's why he went to the cross. Amen. He went to the cross to shed his blood that we may be pure, holy, and without blemish when he returns. And now the Holy Spirit is getting the church ready to be that adored bride, ready for his coming, ready for the rapture, ready for that great day and glorious day of his return. So prepare yourself, church. Let go of all these ungodly things. Let go of them. Whatever you have in your computer, throw your computer away. Toss it in the trash can. My God, be raised with Christ. Seek those things which are above. We seek the bank account. We seek the new car. We seek the chick, the boy. We seek for love, but in the worldly ways. We seek in all this junk, and we're not edifying ourselves. Not allowing the Holy Spirit to edify us, nor build us up. We become impure, and God has to squeeze us again. We become impure, carrying these contaminations, and He has to squeeze us and mold us and form us. Always on the potter wheel. Always being formed and framed. Let me tell you, yeah, as long as we're in this body right here, as long as I'm in this body, I will be tried by God. But praise the Lord, I need it because it keeps me on my knees. It keeps me seeking him. It keeps me in tune with what he's doing. Man, me and my wife been through some battles in this short life here. And that's our pastors here. Fun ones too. Went up to him many a times, pastor. I think I'm going to just throw in the towel. You gotta ask him. Amen. But he would always send me to the prayer closet. Go seek God. See, I didn't know what bearing the cross was. See, we try to do this thing on our own, and we find ourselves defeated all the time. We find ourselves beat up spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. Because there are certain things we're not letting go. And we can't bear that. Because this is what we're bearing. Let's see what else we got, brother. Where were we? We're in the big bag. I think so. No, we already looked in there. Ooh, no more presents. Oh, the pretty one. Thank you. Somebody's paying attention. Uh, what else are we holding on to? Oh, some of us are suicidal. This is, this is up there in the number four killers of our youth. Come on. Spirit of suicide is taking our kids out daily. Well, I don't want to go to prayer. I don't got nothing to pray about. Come on, this is something we could stand against. Come on, this is something we need to stand against, church. It's killing a generation and taking them straight to hell. It is. 
Come on. Some of us were bound by this spirit. I know I was. This thing tried to get me to put a 30 out 6 to my head. It used to make me cut myself. Our youth are cutting themselves, church. Look up their sleeves. Come on. It's because of this. This filthy darkness. You know what it's all about? And we play like nothing's wrong. We ignore it. We ignore it. It's time we stop ignoring what's killing our children. Come on. It's time we take action at the altar in the name of Jesus for our kids. We're losing them. We're losing them. We're losing them. We're losing them. Another pretty one, brother. You must like these pretty bags. Oh, my goodness. Okay, here we go. Fornication. Oh, this is a hot subject in the house of God today, ain't it? Sex is one of the biggest selling thing, multi-billion dollar industries in this world. Yep. Oh, don't get quiet now. Comes out on late night television. Children are doing it. It's normal, I guess. That's what they say. Maybe some of you in this house are doing it. I'll hold it up high. Let me tell you, you can't bear your cross if you're on the sneaks. Come on. Can't do that. You want to live a victorious life? Come on, you got to get rid of this too. These ungodly desires. Do it right. Get married. Come on. Yeah, we don't talk about these much. I do to the youth sometimes. But this is serious. This is killing us. Mom has another man over. Dad has another woman over. Children are confused. Children hate mom because she brings this other man in. Children hate dad because he's bringing this other woman in. What about me? This leaves the children on the back burner. Come on, I went through this. It puts your children on the back burner when you should be cuddling to them and loving on them instead of trying to fill your own selfish desires. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, we're crazy. We're human. Uh. <laughs> oh, that's no more in the pretty bed. Oh, yeah, there is. Gee, there's a lot, people. God told me to write a lot, I guess. Greed. Uh. How many of you have ever been greedy? Uh, come on, men in the men's home. Do you envy? Why does he always get blessed? Women, come on. That's kind of a form. This stops our blessing. This stops God's provision in your life. This does. You will, you'll, you'll harbor everything in your own. And watch it waste away. And it can't even amount to nothing. You have a pocket full of seeds... But you're afraid to plant them, lest the neighbor come and take. They ain't growing in your pocket. Come on. Come on. Oh, my goodness. It's crazy, huh? Okay, them are the pretty bags. Oh, one more. I still got another bag. Wow. Man, you guys are heavy duty tonight. Jesus, there you go. Oh, come on. Anger. This ruins a whole night. And it begins your day very messed up. Remember, don't let your don't let the sun go down on your anger or your sin. Come on. Come on. 
This messes up the, 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 the night at the table. Family night. On your way to church. How many times has the devil ever creeped in your car on your way to church with your kids? I ain't talking to you. Neither am I. But you walk in the house of God. And you won't bring it to the altar. You won't grab your son, nor your daughter, nor your husband, nor your wife, and cry out over here that Jesus may heal you from an anger problem. You won't deal with it. God ain't going to let you bear this. And then all of a sudden you get all angry. How quit this? You'll be like Moses striking the rock. You rebellious Israelites. Then you lose out on your promise. <laughs> That's what he did. He got all mad. He let his anger get him. Oh, my goodness. I'm trying to hurry up. A foul mouth. Oh, my goodness. If I have ever heard a generation speak nasty is the one we're living among now. What are you letting your kids watch? What are you letting your kids hear? Who are you letting your kids hang out with? Or is it your kid? Because let me tell you, I work out of school and their little filthy mouth. Every other word is a bad word. Nothing nice, especially when they stand up to you and they cuss at you too. But then I got to grab a hold of the cross and say, Lord, they probably do the same to their parents. Foul mouth. How are you going to carry the cross and bear the cross, follow Christ with a foul mouth? You can't. There's no way. That's a hindrance. No, no. That was all of them, church. I had fun doing it. Let me see where I'm at. How much more time? I still have time. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Go to the next verse. Okay. Okay, remember, don't, don't live as sons. As, his wrath is on the sons of disobedience among whom you also once walked when you were living in and addicted to such practices. He's speaking to the church. Remember when we were addicted to such practices? We were addicted to them. I was addicted to all of them. I had the pornography as my idol. I was angry because I could not get things right in life. Amen. I had pride because it ain't my fault I was born this way. Amen. And there was all this other stuff. Unforgiveness. Bitterness. All that stuff would arise in a man's, a woman's heart. And it hinders them from walking holy. It hinders them from walking a righteous life with Jesus Christ. It hinders them from bearing that heavy cross. It hinders them. We live that life. We don't live that life now, right? Come on, church. We don't live that life anymore. We live a new life. Verse 8. But now put away, rid yourself, rid yourself completely. I like that. Completely. Get rid of it you completely. Rid yourself completely of all those things. Anger, rage, bad feelings towards others. Curse, uh, amen, slander, foul mouth, abuse, shame, utterance from your lips. Do not lie to one another. Come on. For you have, have, have stripped off the old unregenerated self which it, with its evil practices. You have stripped that off and have clothed yourself. And have clothed yourself with a new spiritual life. Come on, church. How many of you have clothed yourself? Which is ever in the process of being renewed and remolded into a fuller and more perfect knowledge upon knowledge after the image, the life likeness of him who created it we are being molded we are being formed we are being made we are being all amen amen into a new creature by him who created us that is good news but the cross is to bear this cross and be obedient to him the cost is to bear the cross 
And that's our obedience to Him. The cross ain't this right here, this wooden beam. It just represents it. It looks, it, it just shows us. But it's our obedience to His Word that we bear. Our faith to Jesus is what we bear. That's the cross, church. It's when you deny yourself and pick up what Jesus has given you. That is your cross. Amen. You've got to deny yourself in order to bear your cross. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Come on. How many of you know that Jesus took this all to the cross? He took it all to the cross. I forgot I had a little bag here. I was looking at it through the corner of my eye. And maybe some of you are eyeballing it already. No. He, thank God he forgot the little one. No. Amen. But the little one holds the big one. Amen. The hammer. What is he going to do? Uh-oh. Okay. And some nails. Just like Jesus. This is a reminder of what he's taken to the cross. Why hold on to it when he's already paid the price? He was pierced for our transgressions, church. Hung there, bled it, his blood, an atonement for our sin. No greater sacrifice but him. And yet we could play around, complain and murmur. This is too hard, Pastor. I can't carry that cross. I can't be a Christian. You want to know why you can't? Because you love what you have hidden in your heart. I can't do it. Well, then let it go. That's the only way you're going to do it. Surrender all. That's all he looks for. Can't do it any other way. You'll go back to the baggage. You'll go back to the old life. Ladies in the home, you'll go back to the old life if you don't surrender all the way. If there's a little bit of rebellion in you, you'll go back to the old way. At least you bring it to the cross. You'll go back to that old life. At least you bring it to that cross. There might be an old addiction that's arising in you. There might be something that is trying to tempt you and lead you right out of this house. I'm telling you tonight, church, there's a cross at Calvary's Hill 2,000 years ago that bared every man's sin, every man's anguish, every man's pain, every man's ungodly desire. He bared it there. Every sickness was bared there. We are healed by his stripes. Oh, my cancer's my cross. No, it ain't. If you could, you would deny the cancer. Huh. Let me tell you, there are certain things in your life that you're bearing right now that you must have to let go. The Bible says in, in Colossians chapter 2, Verse 15, watch, go there real quick. 14, 14, excuse me. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Check this out, church. Look how powerful this is. Okay? Having canceled and blotted out the, and, and wiped away the handwriting of the note bound with the legal decrees and demands which was in force and stood against us, hostile to us, this note with its regulations and decrees and demands, he set aside, he set aside and cleared completely out of our way. Come on, church, out of our way. And by nailing it to his cross. Come on. 
Every demand that the law ever demanded from us, he knew we couldn't do it. He knew we would fail it because it would show our weakness. Amen. Let me tell you tonight. Amen. The Bible says it this way. Amen. In the, in the, in the law of the spirit, I am alive in Christ Jesus. I'm alive and I am set free by the law of the spirit. I'm set free from the law of sin and death because of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. He cleared my debt. He paid it once and for all. By nailing it to the cross. So bear it. What's so hard about bearing and being obedient to Christ? It's because we want to hang on to all of this. We still desire it. We still desire that big time stuff out there. Uh, That thing has more influence on our life than Jesus Christ. My goodness. The Lord... Gave me this word, uh, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 13. Chapter 8, verse 13. Romans chapter 8, verse 13. Watch what he says here. Watch, check this out. Romans chapter 8, verse 13. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Anytime now. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 13. For if you live according to the dictates of the flesh, you will surely die. Can't get any further than this. You can look at it, but you're dying. Holding all this. You're dying. You will surely die, but if through the power of the Holy Spirit... You are habitually putting to death by the power of the Holy... Let, let, let's look at that. By the, through the power, through the power of the Holy Spirit. How many of you know we need the Holy Spirit? Come on. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually putting to death, making extinct, deadening the evil deeds prompted by the body. You shall and really and genuinely live forever by the power and through the Holy Spirit. It's only through the Holy Spirit. Once you go to Christ and deny yourself, get on your knees and say, here I am. Then that gives latitude for the Holy Spirit to enter your life. Some of us speak with tongues but do not bear the cross. Make the part look really good, don't we? So tonight, Sister Becky, please. Thank you. You might be holding on to a few things. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, you can put to death these things. Get rid of them, church. Anybody here? Get rid of them. Kill them. Mortify them. Get them out of your way. Let's all stand. Get them out of your way. Get them out of your way. Somebody want to pick this up? Get them out of your way. You're going to nail him. Jesus nailed him to the cross 2,000 years ago. Give him praise, church. He took our addiction. He took our habits. He takes our pains. He takes our hurt. He takes those old influences. And he takes them if you're willing to surrender them at the cross tonight. Whatever you're holding on to. Whatever it might be, alcoholism, drug addiction, lust, whatever it might be, 
Every head bowed, please. Every head bowed. Holy Spirit, Jesus. Jesus. Holy Lord. You did what I, I did what I, you told me to do. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, deal with these hearts. You see, let them begin to deal with you, church, right now, where you're standing right there. Let them begin to tug at you. Holy Spirit, begin to tug at them. Begin to tug at them. Begin to tug at them. Oh, deep inside, deep inside, surrender, 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 surrender. there's anyone that is battling and have a hard time bearing that cross God has called you so many times come abide with me follow me be my disciple but you find yourself rejecting him because of your own wants and desires if that's you church somebody just lift your hand out there that's you just lift your hand. Amen. Maybe you're fighting, trying to walk a life after Jesus. And the struggles are getting hard. Because it will get hard. The devil don't like what you're doing. They'd rather have you in bondage than in freedom. In the name of the Lord. If you want him, I'm going to open this altar to every one of you who is fighting right now to bear that cross. This altar is open tonight. Heavenly Father, we come to you, we come to you, we come to you.